glamorize Walmart greeter. I am an enormous fan of our guest today. He is at Yuck Yuck starting tonight all through weekend. Please welcome Canadian icon and trapdoor spider, Scott Thompson. No, wolf. I'm oh, a you're the wolf. wolf. I'm a wolf. Okay, you got it right off the bat. Explain this trapdoor spider Trapdoor thing. spider is, I do this routine. My favorite. About uh, bathhouses. And I know they don't <laughs> exist anymore. Sure. Because they're all getting married and uh -huh. pretending to be heterosexual and pretending that sorry, they're monogamous. Sorry. But it's a, it's a routine about the way gay men are in a bathhouse. And there's two types. There's the trapdoor spiders who lay in wait in their cubicles. And then there's the wolves who prowl. So it's basically about, you know, tops and bottoms, predators and yeah. victims. Pray. Off to a great start, aren't we? <laughs> Bathhouses! Scott Thompson! Um, you've done a ton of TV, right? You've done almost done. every late Are night we doing show. Is this TV? Is this this, technically well, this is internet, so there's okay. less rules here. Okay. All right. Um, but you've done, we, I mean, everyone knows you from Kids in the Hall. That's, we still watch that. Producer Jimmy's a huge fan. Big fan. Hey, All Jimmy. morning you were watching clips on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, um, you did so many characters there. The Queen. Yeah. Secretary Kathy, love her, mm -hmm. and Buddy Cool, my Buddy best Cole. friend. Yeah. Um, did you know on Kids in the Hall, fun fact, maybe you do know, you should, you lived it, you played over 100 waiters Yes, on I did. <laughs> yeah, I did, and I got a birthday party when I uh, played my 100th waiter. Yes. Oh, really? Were you ever I, a waiter in real life? Oh, yes, I was a waiter in real life. Oh, I guess that, that joke got started because they made me all the waiters because the Kids in the Hall, and it's not really true, but in, their, in, the, in, the, in the, the lore of the Kids in the Hall, every time you went to a restaurant, there'd be a waiter and I would turn to the other kids in the hall and go, I slept with him. That's <laughs> <laughs> not really true, but it happened maybe once or, or <laughs> once or 17 times. 80% of the and, time, and, yeah. And, and so they went, so that's why I became, I was the go-to for waiter. the waiter. Um, you know we're in the age of reboots. Everyone's rebooting everything. Yeah. I saw you tweet about this rumor of a kids in the hall reunion. Yeah. Is it true? Yes. Is it happening? The is rumor is true. I mean, it's not, nothing's a foregone conclusion, but it looks every day better. Promising? Better, yeah. Wow. When I saw you retweet that, I'm like, oh, that's an endorsement. Yeah. There's some truth it's here. It's what we want. Whether that will happen or not, it, it's, it, it remains to be seen. But it is what the five of us all want oh, right now. I hope. We all want it too, yeah. don't we? And yeah. I think Lauren wants it. Yeah. I think so. We'll see. All right. We'll <laughs> see. I mean, a lot of it is, you know, we, we, we're kind of like putting it out there almost like magical thinking yeah. so that it will happen, but it seems to be achieving it a life of its own. And, and now we're in, we're in, the five of us are talking and we're figuring out how we could do it. Now, do you ever get scared now because comedy has changed so much because everyone's offended? Yes, yes. Do you guys get, are you a little timid and a little well, hesitant? Of course, not hesitant. It's the, in a way, it's kind of the opposite. I can't wait to plunge into the outrage pool. Yeah. Because I think that it, it's the only time, that's when you realize that you matter again, is when you've pissed someone off. Yeah. And to me, it's very reminiscent of our time. Like when we were in our heyday, the late 80s, the early 90s, that was a very polarizing time. That was a time of great transition. It was when the Berlin Wall was falling. You know, Russia was collapsing. There was Tiananmen Square. AIDS was co coming, you know, ravaging the world. And, and, and political correctness was very strong. But it was very strong, particularly in our community. Yeah. And it was strangling us. But now, over the last 30 years, it's migrated out from the gay community and the feminism, et cetera, to destroy the world. <laughs> it now, it's, it's now, I think, morphed into kind of a, a mainstream monster. Because there's this piece that we do, which is about an art school teacher trying to teach a, a class with a female nude model. And all the kids, they're all like social justice warriors. And it's done in the 90s, and it seems like it's today. But it's really, it was about what was happening then. But what was happening then was very much confined to like, uh, feminism and universities and the gay community, but now it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a perfect time for us to come back because when we were on, you know, on top yeah. of the, our game, I mean, we we're not on top of our game, when we were big, the world was like, it was all about straight white guys in suits, right? But not, it's not like that now. Straight white guys in suits now are on the ground, and we're kicking the crap out of them. But you get in more trouble now, I find. Like, you lose actual You can get into actual, yes. That's the difference. You can get into actual trouble now because everybody's terrified. 
And I, you know, I fully expect that if the kids in the hall do yeah. come back to television, we will get into some trouble. But I'm hoping that we can stick to our guns and just go, it's just comedy. Well, you have a popular quote right. I love about this. You said comedians have a sacred role to ignore political correctness yes, and do. ignore taboos. They do. That's our job. Yes, and it's a sacred job. Yeah. And I find uh, comedians, a lot of comedians today are so frightened by the political climate that they're dropping their ball. Yeah. They are. Like, look at late night television. To me, a lot of people say, civilians say, oh, it's never been better, but I disagree. I think it's never been worse. Ding. Because all they do is talk to their, to their, you know, their brand. Their, you know what I mean? They're not doing anything to heal these divisions. Yeah. And comedy, it is a healer. Yes. It's, and, and, and we've confused everything. These things that we do that make people uncomfortable are ultimately healing. Yeah. Right? They're, they're and, the face and, it dead on. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I just that. have to show you all those hearts. There was just a fee slew of hearts well, coming in for are people still, that were are actually are agreeing it with you. Yeah. 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 yeah uh, true. You know, and I'm just saying, I'm very lucky, like, you know, like to be like, like, a middle-aged straight white guy like me. If I was, <laughs> <laughs> I call myself straight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have things changed, Scott? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> no, but I mean, like a middle-aged white guy like me can't say crap, but I'm gay. And that allows me to. And you so say it all the time. I have a responsibility now because they're so terrified of saying mm -hmm. boo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They are. Well, um, let's talk about some of the, the artists that we've lost. I I'm know showing a lot of leg. Yeah, you are. Bow, <laughs> chicka, <laughs> wow, wow. So Actually, they I, are. Look. Yeah. All of those. Show more leg. Show more. Yeah, got, <laughs> right as I try to segue into talking about dead people. Okay. <laughs> you know, we lost Gord Downey yesterday. I saw That's you tweeting about sad. that. Very yeah. sad. You actually met him. I did meet him. I met him a few times. Um, oh, a few times over the years. And you I saw him perform a number of times. The last time I saw him perform was about four years ago when he and a, a bunch of uh, other great musicians from Canada's royalty, like Craig Northey and people from The Odds and people like that, they performed, uh, we did Brain Candy, the Kids in the Home movie live, yes. and Gord Downey um, led the band. Wow. And he was amazing, I mean, such a rock star. Yeah. And a kind man, like a sweetheart, and sexy. Like, was really? he sexy? I found him extremely oh. sexy, yeah. Very charismatic. Loved I mean. his country, too. Yeah, he did. Um, another one we lost last year, Gary Shandling, oh, who yeah. you worked with on the Larry Sanders show, right? Yeah. What do you think about him? He was a, a, a genius, another yeah. genius, and he was a, a great a mentor to me. And uh, this, is the, this is a funny, horrible story. Oh, <laughs> <you> like those. <laughs> the year before he died, you know, I hadn't spoken to him in many years. And suddenly, out of the blue, on Twitter, I get a direct message from Gary saying, you know, like, hey, Scott, if you come to L.A., look me up. You know, he's a little bad. <laughs> that was and, a good voice. And I'm like, oh, and I'm like, that's be great. He goes, yeah, like, make sure, you know, we get in touch. And I was like, oh, that'd be great, Gary. And I go, <laughs> I said to him, I go, yeah, because let's make sure one of us isn't dead. Oh. And, then, and then he was. I mean, that's that, weird. You're a soothsayer. I was, but and he 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 went back like, ha ha, like you're right, like as if because we're going like time's m marching on, right? And then it's well, it's a very it's you know cliche but important thing to remember. It could be any day for any of us. That's right. right. Yeah. You know, it, that was a shocker. That was yeah. definitely a shocker. But just an amazing, amazing comedian. Yeah, he was, and so were you. Oh, thanks. Um, do you find, though, one thing I want to talk Hearts about is th they're still coming. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're there. Oh, yeah. They're right here, Scott. <laughs> um, now, I don't want to shock anybody, but both Scott and I are of the same persuasion. Right. We're both gay. Yeah. Don't know if you knew. Um, but our generations are very different. We've talked about this yes, off air before. Mm. How do you think it's different for comedians starting out today versus when you were starting? Well, it's way easier. Yeah. I mean, for like a gay comedian? Yeah, right. Way easier, and I'm very jealous. Of yeah. I'm very, yeah. There's a part of me that's quite jealous. That's why he won't follow me back on Twitter. Am I not? I'm going <laughs> to now. I just have. I will now. I for, totally forgot. You know, I um, uh, it's um, it's now. There's so many um. Do you think it, male comics now, and I'm very happy for them and thrilled. But you are you're very successful in spite of you know having those roadblocks. Yeah. How do you think it hindered you starting? Well, out? I couldn't have been a stand up back then. Okay. No, I mean I did. I mean, uh, the, and actually, when I first started out, like in the in the mid '80s, when I was a kid, and I first started out, 
and I met the kids. I just met the kids in the hall. I used to do like an open mic at Yuck Yucks, but the, I went about three times, and the atmosphere was so homophobic from the comedians and the audience. You you can't you know it was AIDS was just beginning. Yeah. It was a nightmare that I went and the, my third time I got called a faggot by someone in the audience, and I went I'm out of here. And then I met the kids in the hall right after, and that's when Buddy Cole came to me, and I thought, oh, I can hide under my characters. But now you can be yourself. The thing that's holding us back is that we're a minority group that has zero support from our own minority group. Mm. And that's the thing that's stopping any of us to go to the next level. Bunch of jealous bitches. Yes, it's it's absolutely true. true. Yeah. Uh, you know, all gay men think they're hilarious. You're not. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna use that line for yeah, Jesse on a daily basis. Stars. He told. He just said, "I am though." We are, <laughs> we are. and they all. And, and so we don't support ourselves. Yeah. So there's never been a single gay male comic to go to the next level. Isn't it interesting no though one. that you would achieve such success as a sketch comedian, but you, it couldn't translate to stand up? It's so because you were so popular on yeah, Kids in the No, home. no, stand up is something gay men only go to see women. They only and go it's to funny, see women. All of my favorite stand-ups, except for you, are, are women. women. Yeah, yeah. Uh, most Joan of them. Mine are, mo not most really? of mine, but half of mine are. Yeah. Really? And see, a lot. I'm not, I don't vibe with female Canadian, or comedians as much, because I find that they're always talking about the same thing. What do you see? Sex, their womanly issues, where it's like, no, you can be a woman stand-up comedian and still talk about what's going on. Like, I take Amy Schumer as an example. Yes. It was just sex and this and that and I was like come on talk about something that both men and women want right. to relate to and listen to and find funny any current events going on you know whatever it may be so I have a hard time but there's with a women. lot of women just killing it out there yeah. right now and doing really well I don't know who their audiences are I mean is it mostly men that go see I mean because I've heard that women don't go see women either like, mm. like here's the, 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 the most supportive is lesbians they're the most supportive of each other. And they support their own kind, oh, too, totally. big time. Totally. Their own kind. They do. They do. They, they, do. they do. I mean, I opened for Deanne Smith when she was here last yeah. month, and it was all buzz cuts. The whole audience, just yeah. buzz cuts. It was crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just cut in there. with a buzz cut, but I'm just saying. Well, for some, it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna might not be able to pull it off. I don't no, know. I have a pointy head. A, a few more page boys. Yeah, there you go. Just a few more page boys. Uh, speaking of Buddy Cole, though, I, that's who I want to be when I grow up. I love Buddy Cole, and I'm such a bad fan because I just ordered Buddy Babylon uh, when I found out you were coming oh, in. I haven't read it yet. Don't. Don't, don't read it? Don't read it because what's coming out in 20, 2018 is the new is the 20th anniversary of Buddy Babylon <gasps> with 50 pages put back in that they cut out at the beginning. Oh, so the good stuff. you got to wait to the to the you know the director's cut. Oh, wow. I can't wait. I didn't even know that was happening. Yeah. Have you written any other books? No. I mean, I wrote, yes, a graphic novel right. called The Hollow Planet, and I've got the second one coming out, and I'm trying to turn it into a, a television series. Yes. Oh, that would be great. Yes. But, you know, and I'm hopefully writing it. I'm, I'd like, I, I'm doing a Buddy Cole one-person show. I'm doing a Buddy Cole show in L.A., and yes. I'm going to take it on the road, oh, and I'm hoping that there'll that. be another book. Is the, the show that you're working on, is that the pilot you're writing right now that you're shopping around? No, the pilot is a Danny Husk pilot, okay. who's my businessman character, and that's, that's based on the graphic novel The Hollow Planet. But the Buddy Cole thing is a show called Après le Déluge, and it's the Buddy Cole monologues after television. So they're the monologues that I wrote from 1995 to today. So none of them have ever been on TV, and there's mm -hmm. about 14 of them, but I, I, I will winnowed it down to about eight or nine. Okay. But it's basically, it's a story, you could, basically it's the, it's the progression of Buddy Cole from 1995 to now, because I've always written for him. Because there's sometimes, there's certain topics that I find I can't tackle, but Buddy can. Like, mm. for some reason, he's unimpeachable. He really is. He can say anything. Kind of like, like Donald Trump. <laughs> well, unimpeachable. In, in a way. In a way. <laughs> in a so, you know what? I think he'd get along with Donald Trump better <laughs> than you think. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Not only because Donald Trump's probably paying him a lot of money, if you know what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, he, he definitely. Uh, a a gentleman, Hassan, sorry to interrupt you there, says a Buddy Cole Netflix show would be amazing. That's, what, that's what's in the works. A Buddy Cole special. You know, I could even see Buddy like hosting a late night talk show oh, or something. Could you be, imagine that? Yes, I've, I've been pitching that for years. Oh, I, let's let's yeah. do it. I, I uh, let's do it. That. Jesse's like, that's I'm what, I'm that's I'm what I'm late too. night needs really. It does. Mm -hmm. They really do. They need to really, uh, you know, they basically need to turn it over, just like. Upset the apple cart. 
And Buddy yeah. Cole is definitely underneath that apple cart. Buddy Cole really can do whatever he wants. I remember last time you were at Yuck Yucks, he was wearing a turban. Yeah. Cultural appropriation. Uh, 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 yeah. Nobody said anything. People loved it. I, I can't believe it. You can't do it. I do it all the yeah, time. Yeah, you do everything. <laughs> you can't say that word. I say it all the time. <laughs> um, speaking of comedy TV, you also had an 80s era punk band. I did. And there's a documentary coming out about that. Yes, there is. What well, was the band called? Mouth Congress. <laughs> <laughs> Mouth Congress. And it's actually Actually, um, it's um, I don't know. If it, it's a, a Hindi term from the Kama Sutra, and it means oral sex. <laughs> wow! Well, uh, learn something new every day. Yeah, <laughs> and really um, so yeah, that's it, it, Paul Bleed and I fronted it uh, in the mid '80s, early '90s. It was when the kids in the hall, when I was doing both. Yeah. And there was a point in my life when it's like, what's going to take off, the band or the kids in the hall? And the kids in the hall took off. Awesome. But we're making a documentary that will hopefully come out next year. Um, I got a question here from Hassan as well. He goes, oh. do you have any information about a possible Hannibal season four? Yes, um, I do. Uh, oh! Uh, I guess the question is, are you willing to share that or are you allowed yeah, to share it? Yeah, I mean, it? I'm allowed to share it, actually. I mean, nothing. Again, it's like the kids in the hall. It's in the works. Um, so uh, I'm hoping it happens. If, it, if it's not a fourth season, it will be a movie. Oh, that would be good. Yeah. In case you don't know, Scott played Detective Jimmy Price on Hannibal. Jimmy Price, what? It sounds like that could be Buddy Cole's boyfriend or something. It really does. It's a good porn star name. It is a porn star <laughs> name. Right. I know. Jimmy Price. Maybe you can have a spin off. Jimmy High Price. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, uh, I had a great time doing that show. Is it as scary to be on set as it is to watch it? Lead opposite. Oh, okay. Out of all the sets I've ever been on and all the shows I've ever been part of like that, it's the happiest, uh, most light set. That's so oh, funny. Wow. Isn't that weird? Like, you know, they'll go cut and then people are drenched in blood and it's a joke. Yeah. I have heard that before, how when you watch it, the final cut, when they add the filters and everything and the treatments, it's like a whole new show for yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, too. the only thing is sometimes some of the, some of the prosthetics and some of the, you know, the special effects are quite grisly and very, very realistic. The only one that really, really threw me was the charred child. <gasps> and that was the little kid that was in a fireplace. Now, they wouldn't allow it on television. Oh. So it really just traumatized us because they, they cut the whole sequence. But it still it lives out there now, but they wouldn't put it on TV. But it's like a little boy found in a fireplace. Oh. And that was a very realistic charred child. So after they wrapped the show, I took the charge, child, and now it's on my wall. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, it's the time of year. Happy Halloween. you got to face your fears, right? Well, it's such so. a realistic-looking charred child. I can't stop saying charred child. That's a good band. There's charred a new child. character. There's a good vocal warm-up before your charred show. Child. Charred child. Or a charred new child. character. Uh -huh. <laughs> charred child. Bobby the charred child. Yes. Now, I know I, start, I studied theater at college. I know a lot Me of stand-ups. You did, too. Mm -hmm. A lot of stand-ups started out wanting to be serious actors. Me, too. So you must have loved getting the opportunity and during Hannibal. Yeah, I went to York University to study acting. I had no intentions of being a comedian. And yeah, then they met the kids here. in the hall and it all changed. But um, no, I wanted to be a serious actor. So do you still, you love that still, obviously? I like acting more than anything. Yeah. Even when I'm playing, as, uh, even in stand-up comedy, I, I, I really enjoy it. But I deep down feel like I'm playing the character of a stand-up comedy. Mm. Uh, that's what I tell people too. I'm yeah. really an actor pretending to be a comedian. Yes. Yeah, that's how it feels. Uh, yeah, it does feel like Gilbert that. Gottfried was here last month. He said the same thing. Did he really? I think a lot of us feel like we're just imposters. Yeah, I know how to do it. I know it, but I'm really just, it's a character of mine, stand up comic. Yeah. Now, you're Canadian. We're in Ottawa, obviously. You were also in an Alanis Morissette video. What? She's an Ottawa native, hands clean. Jimmy actually told me, I didn't know that little trivia oh, about Scott Thompson. Yeah. yeah. But that was cool. What was she like? Well, she was very nice. She was very nice. She was trying to do stand-up comedy at the time. Oh, was really? She? Yes. It, it didn't work out for her. But, uh, <laughs> things did work out. Th other things worked <laughs> yeah. out for her. But here's an interesting st um, story about that shoot years ago. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to be good. This is good. I'll never forget doing that shoot because the boom guy was my favorite porn star. What? Oh, yeah. And there he is, and he's like his. What know, was his name? Whisper I'm to my ear. I'm not saying his name. I can't say his name. Tell me off air. But I will. And, and then <laughs> whistling, going, oh my God, I know him. I know all of him. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like a boom guy, and I'm like, oh, that's why he's got such nice arms. Yeah. <laughs> 
But wow. that's L.A., you know what I mean? You're like, oh, you, you can quite often go, oh, my barista is my favorite porn star. Yeah, well, hey, whatever, <laughs> however you can get work out there, right? You yeah. still live there. Oh, you, you still do porn. Yes, I still do porn. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever thought about moving home? Have I ever thought about doing porn? Oh, Canadian porn, time. though, I don't know. Well, that's a good... Is there a genre of Canadian porn? I don't know, but it would probably have one of those weird filters over it, like like a lot of Canadian shows I have. I know we both turned to Jenna for that question. <laughs> but don't you think there would be like there would be a really good like Jack Mint Singh, uh, Justin Trudeau scene? Wouldn't that? <gasps> hey now. Hot? And, and I mean, we, <laughs> we have a, we have off. beavers as like one of our national animals. Yeah. There has to be a beaver tie in there. Oh my god, I would love that. Like you know what I mean? He Maple takes his syrup. turban off and his yeah. hair down. Then he like. He whips Trudeau's ass with his <laughs> hair. <laughs> he ties it back up. <laughs> Trudeau's crying. How much further can we go before they just shut the camera off? Yeah, really. Yeah. That's okay. Lots of people are laughing that's at us, good. and that's all we care about. Yeah. Um, now, you know, Halloween is the gay Christmas. Mm -hmm. Are you a big Halloween fan? I am, yeah. Do you have plans this year? Not yet. I'm on, I'm on the road. Yeah, you're busy. You're working. Um, uh, what, so what, I actually, yeah, Halloween I'll be doing stand-up comedy playing my favorite character, the stand-up comedian. Uh, there you go. What you did there. Uh, do you have a favorite costume over the years? This is funny. Yeah. I was telling someone this the other day and they looked at me like, maybe they shouldn't be friends with me. It was one of those, because <laughs> they asked me the similar question, what was your favorite costume? And it was in grade, <laughs> and I, it, it basically set the pattern for my entire life. Grade seven, I won <laughs> the school best costume, Aunt Jemima. Oh, so, drag that's overwhelming. And thing. blackface. Oh, no. <laughs> Imagine that Ed in 2017. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Those pictures will come back to haunt me. Some <laughs> social justice warrior. Did you see Scott Thompson when he was 11 playing Aunt Jemima? I can hear them clicking on the keyboard already. Yeah. Google search. Bring him down. Bring him down. <laughs> Is that the same turban you use on stage today? <laughs> no. No, it wasn't a turban. It was a head wrap. Oh, sorry. My mistake. <laughs> Let's just leave it alone. But okay? <laughs> I was so proud of that character. I got to do my two favorite things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, we're almost done, but I have to ask you about one more thing. You got kicked out of university. I did. Tell that story, please. I got kicked out of York University in my final year because of behavioral issues. <laughs> Yeah. Like not attending or like no, no, pranks? No, I attended. Class clown. They didn't want me to attend. Yeah. yeah. Class clowning kind of behavior. I was a... Uh, um, what would they say? I was a handful, and uh, I was studying theater, yeah. and I I wanted to be a comedian, but I didn't know it yet. So everything I did, I made fun of, like Shakespeare. I mocked Shakespeare. I mocked Brecht. I just mocked everything, and I got I was kind of also a little violent. No, <laughs> in, a in little, like, only a little. Well, in like I I'd never done anything before. Like I come from a very large family. It was all boys, and in all the improvisations and that. Everything turned violent, and so I was kind of a crazy person. And um, so the teachers couldn't handle me, and they kicked me out um, because I did a, a Montgomery Clift show yeah. where I played Montgomery Clift, and I, I kind of broke a glass, and then I stepped in it, and I had my feet all bloody, and it was like a real punk performance, and they just couldn't handle me. But then they threw me out of school, and then <laughs> I got <laughs> drunk that night with a bunch of my friends in the class. We went back to the school, and... <laughs> <laughs> I peed on all the doors of the teachers. <laughs> they me out, and then I went to my studio and I scratched my name with scissors on the floor. Good for you. They probably yeah. have it like cut out and framed yeah, now yeah. on the wall. Yeah, yeah. So they, they basically threw me out. But it, in a way, it, it was good for me because it drove me. Like my first 10 years at least were driven by revenge. <laughs> yeah, well, look at you now. Yeah, yeah, have you ever like run into any of your yeah, older professors? I've been old asked professors? to speak at York University a number of times, and I'm like, are you kidding me? No. 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 You I'm should fine. take the opportunity I and just now. rip now into I, them. Now I'm, I'm mellow. So, <laughs> I, I am. I'm quite mellow now. I feel like that's a sign of success. I know there's a lot of famous people that have been that have dropped out of school and look at them now. They even asked me to leave uh, theater school. They told Where me were I, you? Were you I was at Humber, yeah, Humber? and they told me I was too commercial to make it in theater, See, so they encouraged me to leave. What is what a ridiculous thing? Only yeah. Canadians would say that. Too commercial. You might make money. Yeah. <laughs> what madness. Well, you know, theater people don't like that. And I had no, they don't super like bleached that. hair, self tanner. It wasn't good. So puka it looks like necklace. pretty similar to yeah. now, just yeah. with a puka shell and necklace. No necklace. Do you have a puka shell necklace? No, no, I don't. We should He's bring it back, though. I like your shirt. He's got a bit of leather shoulder going on I here. Did. Leather pants? Look at us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm the only one. This is the leather. real leather special. Oh, yeah, leather yeah. shoes. Yeah. And a leather belt. There you go.
All right, well, you know what? Scott is going to be at Yuck Yuck starting tonight all through the weekend. If you would, I'd love you to take us out. Thank everyone for watching. Give us a little buddy coal, will you? What, uh, what do I say? I, thank I you for watching. But then here's the thing. Or tell I them to can't go. can't really. Buddy would never appear like you. That's, that's, that's right. If it was just radio, I'd do it. I'm just trying to get a little buddy. I know. I love him so you much. You know what I mean? Would, would you want Buddy to look like this? I think he looks just fine like no. this. <laughs> You wouldn't want that. Well, if we want to go out on a good note. Yeah, we do. No, I'll do it as myself. Okay. If it was just radio, I would do it. But not I was just going to say, one person said they're going to dress as a charred child for At the Halloween. Show tonight. <laughs> we need more costumes like that. Yeah, okay. Charred <laughs> children. <laughs> Scott, even, if I did, buddy, you could put one of those filters on, one of those apps that, you know, like, like a queen app that makes everybody look queeny. We could, you know I mean? if but we weren't no. live. I'm just going to say, what do I say? What do you want me to say? Well, say come see me tonight at, at Yuck Yuck. Oh, yeah, come see me, because I can't do because Buddy's not appearing in the okay. show. Uh, come see me tonight at Yuck Yucks at 8 o'clock. Is it 8 o'clock? I don't know. And oh, then, Dan, the owner, doesn't Dan even know. Dan doesn't know. And, and then, then after uh, it gets dark. After, when after it gets dark, yeah. So, and like, six? Come on. <laughs> and then tomorrow, 8 and 10. Right? No, 7 and 9.30. 7 and 9.30. All right. 9 just follow him on Twitter, Scott yeah, Thompson yeah, underscore. Go to Yuck Yuck's website. We'll have all the information. <laughs> Don't bother us. And I promise I'll have new pants on. Yeah, <laughs> he gets in here. He was just so excited. He ripped his pants. What actually happened before we go? Nothing happened. I just, Is I've been the on the road too long and I, I, I lost, uh, it's a long story. Well, yeah. Kids in the Hall Twitter account just retweeted us, by the way. Nice, Kids good. in the Hall. Good. We love Kids in the Hall. Fingers crossed for that reunion. Yeah, Give good. it up for Scott Thompson, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. That was great. Thank you. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you.